In this edition of Tech Notes, we're going to talk about a compressor electrical inspection. However, before I begin that, I just want to please ask you to please subscribe. If you get something out of these videos, if you sort of enjoy what I'm giving you folks, take a minute and subscribe. Subscriptions make a diff big difference to YouTube content creators. Okay, it's important to get a channel subscription count up. The subscribe button is right under the video. Please take a moment and subscribe. And I'm going to remind you again at the end of the video. So let's begin with the most simple of the compressors, the one you're going to see most often in residential. It's a single phase hermetic compressors. They'll always have a capacitor in series with the start winding and air conditioning. Okay, you might have some window air conditioners that don't have it. And you might also have a start capacitor. They're found in refrigeration as well, but let's talk about air conditioning for now because the ones in refrigeration are set up a little bit different and they might not have a capacitor involved with them. But let's specifically talk about residential and light commercial air conditioning. So this is an example of a wired compressor, okay? A couple things to note on here. Um, let me just throw a pen on here. This is where all my connections are. It's sealed all the refrigerant is sealed in the unit. Gently remove the wiring harness. Okay, that plug that I just circled will pull straight out. Okay, now if there's a little bit of rust and corrosion built up on it, it may be a little bit difficult to remove, but try not to remove it at an angle. You can actually damage the connections. So check and make sure the pins are clean. Okay, this is your only connection to the motor windings, is these pins here. The other thing I do is I always note if I start seeing water build up. I don't know if you saw it in the previous picture, but there's some rust on that connector. There's some moisture in the center here. So that could be a problem or could evolve into a problem. So again, we're talking, we want to note if there's rust build up, if there's water, if there's moisture under that connection, because there really shouldn't be. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is you're going to take one meter lead. Okay, you're going to use your own meter. You're going to take one meter lead and attach it someplace to the copper tubing that's connected to the compressor. Or if there's a ground terminal connected to that. But I find most often copper tubing. Your other lead, you're going to put on one of these pins. Okay, so we're going to take the resistance from run, which is one of the terminals, to ground. Then we're going to take the resistance from start to ground. And then we're going to take the resistance from common to ground. And again, you'll notice in this picture here, I was able to connect to the piping right at the manifold on the condenser. Okay, now conclusions based on checks to ground. You should never have any readings from any winding to ground. If a winding shows resistance, which is continuity from the winding ground, you have a shorted to ground compressor. Depending on how low the resistance reading is, it could trip breakers or blow fuses. There's no way to fix this problem. You can't recreate the windings, recreate the insulation. You're going to have to have a new compressor eventually. Do not stop your testing at this point. Continue. Just because you find one problem doesn't mean you shouldn't continue on and check the rest. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to check resistances from one winding to another winding. So I'm starting with run to common. You'll see I have a 1.6. Start to common, I have a 2.5. And run to start, I have a 4.0. Okay. Now I'll explain these readings in a minute. But again, we want to make sure all our windings are connected. So you can do a quick reasonability check on this. Okay, we had a 1.6, a 2.5, and a 4.0. Okay, the pin across from the highest reading is common. So my highest reading is 4. The pin across from it is common. From common to the next highest reading, which is my 2.5, is start. And then the remaining reading, with the one with the lowest reading is run. Okay. Now you'll also see that if I take my 1.6 and my 2.5 and add them together, I come very close to 4.0. Okay. So st the winding from common to run 
and common to start should add up and come very close to 4.0. And that's because when you're taking a run, if I put a meter lead here and a meter lead here, I'm actually taking my reading through both of those readings. Okay, add the two readings, common to start, common to run, should come very close to the start to run reading, as I just showed you in the prior slide. So, based on the readings that I just took, you have no short to ground based on our readings. The windings are good based on our readings. So I have no electrical issues found with the compressor. So, what if either set of readings fails? In a case of failure of either set of readings, do an acid test on the refrigerant in the system. An acid test will tell you if the system is contaminated or if there was a sudden failure of the compressor. This is sort of important to know. Acid in the system is caused by moisture contaminated oil. Acid is 99.99% not present in failures caused by lightning or high voltage surges. Okay, acid takes a while to build up. It's not instantaneous. So what I use is an acid test kit. It's actually really easy, takes less than 10 seconds to do. Okay, you follow the directions. Okay, so here is one that is a negative test. You'll notice the paper color has not changed. And that is a positive test. Okay, so again, acid test in our case, in the examples that I've been using, was not needed as the readings are good. We have one more set of tests needed for a single phase compressor. Check the capacitors. Okay, because sometimes a capacitor will actually People do mistake that for a bad compressor. Prior to finishing an inspection of compressor, you have to test the capacitors. Weak capacitors can cause compressor failure or make the system appear that there's a compressor failure. The run capacitor, which is on most of our residential and light commercial air conditioning systems, both on the compressor and the fans, usually have a metal case. They're between 5 and 700 or 70 microfarads, and they do hold an electrical charge. So again, for those of you doing this at home or new to the trade, make sure you discharge the capacitors. Also, make sure the disconnect is turned off because sometimes L2 is not switched by the contactor. You might have a live L2. So always, before you touch capacitors, pull the disconnect. Okay, look at the capacitor. Okay, look at the tag on the capacitor. Okay, this one is around 70 microfarads, okay? The tag doesn't really show well on this capacitor. Tolerance is plus or minus 10%. Okay, use your meter to measure the capacitance. In this case, this is another capacitor, not the same one in the prior picture. I have 39.9 um, microfarads. Capacitor is rated for 70, it's bad. This would be enough to damage a, a compressor start winding over time or cause a breaker to trip. Okay. The meters, a lot of the meters you buy and can buy in the home improvement stores or even online on Amazon or any other online vendor, you can actually test the capacitance. Make sure the capacitor is discharged. Start capacitors also have to be tested. They're normally plastic. They have a start relay with them to remove them from the circuit once the compressor starts. They're always wired in series with the start windings. They usually have ranges, uh, capacitance between 150 microfarads and 400 microfarads. Okay, this is an example. Again, it's rated for 135 to 162 microfarads, and you can always tell that by looking at the tag on the capacitor if you can find it. Okay, the reading I'm getting is 205.3, Okay, the start capacitor is bad because my rating shouldn't be over 162. Okay, so you have a bad start capacitor there. Again, it's enough to do damage and the possibility it's going to blow breakers eventually. So conclusion for capacitor from the capacitor check in our example here, the compressor tested out properly. Both capacitors were bad. The compressor is not the problem. We need to replace both capacitors and recheck the operation of the system.
Now let's shift phase, let's shift a little bit to more of the commercial units. Three phase compressors. These compressors do not have capacitors. You have an L1, an L2, and an L3 coming into the condenser. That's the outdoor unit. You're gonna have three lines, three legs. There may be one leg that's not switched by the contactor. Always disconnect to the unit to the power to the unit before testing. Lock out and tag out. Three phase systems can seriously injure you with um, shock hazards. Okay, Th a way to see if there's a three phase system. A lot of times you'll have a three phase that's one, two, three contactor. You might also have three fuses someplace along the way, or on the breaker panel, it will be a triple breaker. Okay, the compressor has three connections like everything else does. We still have three winding connections. Okay, normally they're a little bit connected, a little bit heavier. It's a heavier duty compressor because it has a lot, handles a lot more amperage. Isolate the compressor. Okay, in this case, we took the three wires going to the compressor off of the contactor. Isolate it. You don't want to connect it to anything else when you're doing these checks. Okay, you're going to again work with, you're going to check each winding to ground. Now you'll notice I'm not saying start, run, or common because commercial three phase units do not have start, run, and common. So you're going to do L1 to ground, L2 to ground, L3 to ground. Then you're going to start doing winding to winding. We're going to do L1 to L3, we have 0.4. L2 to L3, I did get a 0.3. And L1 to L2, I got a 0.4. Okay, so we have continuity from winding to winding. And yes, three-phase compressors have less resistance normally than single-phase compressors. Quick check on winding resistance. All of the windings should have the same or very close to the same resistance. Some windings will have one leg with a slightly lower, like a 0.1 ohm or less resistance difference, okay? Don't worry about that. There's no start winding. Looking at our readings, there's nothing electrically wrong with this compressor. There's no short to ground, and the winding to winding readings are good. So let's say this system is blowing a breaker when people are when it's trying to run. Well, then we have to look mechanical, or we have to look at other components in the system that might be doing that. There's more than just a compressor that can blow the breaker. Okay, winding to winding readings are good. So we have one more type of compressor that's actually becoming much more popular. They're single phase inverter system compressors. These systems have inverters that take the AC current, change it to DC, or change it to a, another phase of AC before it goes into the compressor. Be extremely careful checking these. Lock out and tag out and always ground the compressor leads to discharge internal capacitors before checking. You can tell if you have an inverter-based system because you won't have the standard contactors. You'll have a lot of circuit boards. And normally, let's see if it shows better on the next picture, on inverter systems, you're going to have a relatively large heat sink here. Okay? So, and you have a board with a lot of capacitors on it. Again, we're changing the phase of the L1 and L2 coming into the unit. You're still only going to have two leads coming into the unit. These are used in residential and light commercial environments. So you're still going to have only the L1 and L2. Okay. And again, a little bit of a closer look here. This is my line coming in. And all, everything else happens on the circuit board. Now, slightly off the picture, you have three terminals. And you can almost see there's a black wire, there's a red wire, and there's a yellow wire. Those are my three that are going to the compressor. Sometimes those are difficult to find, so you just have to look hard for them. Okay, so we're going to do, and I'm calling this, again, we don't have a start, run, or common with these compressors, so we have to call it something else. Okay, so T1 to ground, terminal 1 to ground, we're still going to check for we don't want current. T2 to ground, we, again, OL is fine, that's just open. That's what we're looking for, and T3 to ground. So now we've checked all our compressor connections. 
Then I'm going to go T1 to T2. I get my 0.4. T1 to T3, 0.4. T2 to T3, I'm getting 0.3. Wait a sec. This looks an awful like, like a three-phase compressor, correct? Yeah, it really is. Okay, but it's being used with an inverter system. It's very efficient. All of the windings should have the same or very close to the same resistance. Some windings will have one leg with a slightly lower resistance. There is no start winding. Okay, inverter system windings act very close to three-phase compressors. They allow the compressor to have variable speeds based on capacity. By, alter, by changing the frequency and the voltages, the, depending on which brand you're using, it's either going to change frequency or voltage, we can have variable speeds. Be extremely careful with all readings. Make sure the system is disconnected. These components hold a lot of amperage and you can get hurt. Okay, the boards have a lot of capacitors on them. Okay, you have to discharge these systems. Okay, based on our final readings, the compressor is not shorted to ground. The compressor windings are good, and the problem is not electrically in the compressor. We have no capacitors to check. Even though it is in a residential um, single-phase system, we cannot individually check those capacitors on the board. So... Most often, testing a compressor for electrical failure is as simple as six resistance reading. You take each of the three terminals to ground, each terminal to the other two terminals. The compressor should never have a path to ground, and the compressor should always have an explainable winding-to-winding -winding resistance. So hopefully you get something out of that video. Electrical checks on compressors, a lot of technicians make mistakes on it. Okay, it is something to keep an eye on, and it's something to double check if you doubt any of your readings. Please take a moment and subscribe. As I said earlier, subscriptions make a big difference to us content creators. If you watch this video and learn something from it, please subscribe, share it, let other people know we're here. The subscribe button is right under the video.